and celebrate each other's wins. You know why? Because I think people are emotionally used to build that word. Um, and you know what? I want to say this. This is on the phone. good. But I think that when you're able to give somebody else credit, that is a sign of emotional maturity, right? I, I, I want to throw in here that Christina gives me way too much credit. Like, she name drops me a lot, which I think is the sweetest thing ever, but it says a lot about her character that she's not trying to get all the attention on herself. She wants yes, to give credit yes. to others and build other people up. And really, she is fantastic. All on her own. With or without me, she'd be amazing. Are you breaking up with me again? Right <laughs> now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no sign up. We said empathy. So empathy means you're kind of looking around and you kind of view the world as a good place and you want to make it better. And just you want to show as much support for people and love for people as you can. You want to add as much good to the world as you can. Okay? So that is empathy. Next one is, and this one's huge, positive attitude. Nobody likes to be around a negative Nelly. And the thing about negative people a lot of times is they don't even realize they're negative. Until somebody tells them. Or they start every sentence with, I don't mean to be negative, but yeah. if you need a disclaimer before your sentence, then that's a pretty um, surefire way to tell that what you're about to say is probably negative. You shouldn't have to put a disclaimer in front of what you're about to say. That also applies to gossip. I don't want to gossip, but <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. Okay, you shouldn't have to have disclaimers on what you're about to say. All right, so. When you have a positive attitude, you're able to cope with sudden change. And change is hard. It's also inevitable. Guys, our company has, I've been with Plexus seven years. And I can't even count how many changes the company has gone through. Our website's changed, our products have changed, our comp plan has changed. Like we've had a lot of changes, right? And you leaders have to adapt to change. You're not gonna get away from change if you refuse to adapt to change, you will be stuck. And so keeping a positive attitude during changes, some people are very averse to change, um, and some people handle it well, but every leader has to be able to adapt to change. Just know, that is part of emotional maturity. Um, and then keeping a positive attitude about the changes in front of your team especially, that's so important as your team looks to you like you are the President of the United States. I mean, the president could make a facial expression and it affects the stock market. That's how much influence he has. You, you are like that to your team. If a change comes about and you flinch or you have a negative comment to say about it, then your team is going to be the exact same way. I'll even go so far as to say you, they're watching your facial expressions on team calls. If you're linked in and engaged in learning something, so are they. If you're disengaged and scrolling mm -hmm. on your phone, so are they. So are they. Mm -hmm. They're watching every single thing that you're doing. And if you're not on purpose adding positive value, by default, you're subtracting. Yeah, agree. People with a positive attitude express gratitude. Yes. Often. Instead of complaining about minor things that annoy them. People with a positive attitude have way more good days than bad days. We all have bad days every once in a while. But if every time somebody talks to you and they ask you how you're doing, you're sitting there with a laundry list of all the things that went wrong that day, you are a negative person. <laughs> and people do not enjoy being around others like that. So try flipping that script. Be intentional about this. Some personalities do tend to see the glass half empty. I'm one of them. I am one that has to be very intentional about this because I, I'm a melancholy. I could very easily be negative, but I don't think any of the people who are close to me would characterize me as a negative person, and it's not because I don't have the tendency to go that way. It's because I'm intentional about not. So anybody can do that, okay? It's a choice. It is really a choice. Um, and also, just like your, your husband, when he comes home, he wants to hear that you had a good day. He really does want you to be happy. He doesn't want to hear about all the things that went wrong in your day. Not saying you can't vent to your husband ever, but just keep in mind, this affects your marriage too. This, all these success principles, they apply to every area of your life, not just your business. And your upline also likes to hear that you had a good day. If your upline asks you how you're doing and your day was a horrible, terrible, no good, rotten one all of the time, this is an issue. And right? if that one is me, I'll 
stop asking. I am not kidding. Listen, that is how I decided to do my top 20%. If you constantly take value even from your upline, I'm piecing out. Mm -hmm. And listen, this applies to your marriage and your business, but when you're constantly complaining to your spouse about your business, and then you can't figure out why your husband's not supportive, remember that emotional cycle of change? He feels like it would, he could end it all for you if he would just quit. Mm -hmm. People say, I don't want my husband to only keep going. Really? Mm -hmm. Because all you do is moan and groan about all the stress and pressure of this. He's trying to help you out. He's going to end it all for you. Just quit, darling. Stop it. There's Everybody got a laundry list. We all got it. What if I started every single team training and just told you all the things that were wrong? I got them yesterday. I was about to pull out of the driveway. Kids, cool call. I had to go pick him up. He was sick. So now the husband has to come home from work. So I stay with kids. Kids sick. I'm going out of town. Kid, oh, so mom, I don't want to hear all that. Everybody got problems. You know what I found? I found a husband I was grateful for to take care of. Us. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, people who complain all of the time, they really have a victim mindset. They believe they're a victim to their circumstances, and you're not. So when someone asks you how your day was, try focusing on the good things first. There should be way more good days in your life than bad. First of all, we live in America. Yes. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on before I start. <laughs> okay. All right, just be great. Okay, next point. Emotional mature people can handle conflict well. And we're about to really stay right here a minute because this is an important life skill. This is you, where you shine. You can, what? Handling, handling conflict. Yeah, handling conflict, yeah. That's a good deal. She shall you. You must all know me very well. I'm just kidding. I don't really do it. Okay, but you can express disagreement. There's going to be times where you don't see eye to eye. If you hang around anybody long enough, you're going to find things you don't like about them and that you disagree with them on. It's inevitable, okay? Me and Christina do it all of the time. But the reason why we have such a close relationship is because we have open communication and we can approach one another without the other one getting offended. We're very respectful to one another. We're open to the feedback. And we love each other. Right? So you can communicate and have disagreements without being disrespectful, without getting emotional or angry or yelling or insulting or gossiping. Even worse. Okay? So people that are emotionally mature, they know how to handle themselves well in a conflict. They're not flying off the handle when they're angry, acting a fool, throwing things, whatever, <laughs> saying hurtful things. Some people, when they feel hurt, they're going to try to hurt you back. That's not love, guys. That's the opposite of love. If you love someone, even if they hurt you, if you really love that person, you're still going to want what's best for them. You don't want to try to hurt someone intentionally that you love with your words. You can control that. Don't do that. And this is why building with people who are emotionally mature is so important. Do you want a team full of women that because so-and-so offended so-and-so, now you've got this big giant mess of hurting people hurting people? No. Do the right thing. All right, so performs well under stress. Um, not going to another person. If you feel hurt, not going to another person to vent or process or ask for prayer. Christian way to say it. Um, they hurt. Because this is exactly how drama triangles begin. That is funny. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it happen. All right. We have a handout for you guys. So we're going to pass this out real quick. Thank you.